Hey everyone, it's Alex from Tailscale here. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Tailscale SSH, one of my absolute favorite features. I use SSH all day, every day to connect to devices in development and production environments. And I'm gonna show you how we can use tags to isolate the identity of those connections and make things more secure across your infrastructure. So if you've been looking for the fastest way to get started with Tailscale SSH, then this is the video for you. In order to get started with Tailscale SSH, you'll need to turn it on. Now the easiest way to do that is to go to the console of your system. In my case, this is a DigitalOcean droplet. And I'm gonna do Tailscale status, just to double check I'm on the correct Tailnet. And then Tailscale set dash dash SSH. And what you'll notice in the console underneath here, we can see that I've got a little green button has appeared on my Tailscale admin console. So now what we can do is we can SSH into that node using the Tailscale machine name, so no IP addresses are required. I can do dev-webnyc1, and that lets me SSH from my local dev VM, behind a firewall, all that kind of stuff, out to a machine running on DigitalOcean with no SSH keys configured whatsoever. So if I just show you the SSH directory of my local Ubuntu host, there's no keys in there. I didn't have to type in any passwords and I can SSH now as root into that cloud server. Now the paranoid amongst you might be thinking that was too easy. Perhaps you'd like to add a, a little more friction and a couple more checks to this process. So let's jump into the Tailscale ACLs. These can be found under the admin console under the access controls panel. If we change this action from uh, accept to check, I'm also gonna change the check period to every minute. The default, by the way, is 12 hours on this. I'm gonna change it to every minute just so that it forces another check for me for the demo. It's now gonna say, we need to verify that you are who you say you are. Please log in and authenticate. And as soon as I do that, I sign in with my Google account here. We'll see that in real time, Boom, we're now authenticated to that remote SSH node with another check. Now what happens if we're on call and we get paged at an inconvenient time? Maybe we don't have our laptop with us, but we do have the ability to you know, borrow a relative's laptop or a friend's laptop and actually connect into a web browser. Well, we can create an ephemeral SSH session in the browser. So what this is going to do is it's going to create an ephemeral node and add it to my tail net. In real time, I'm going to connect to this tail scale node. And you can see that underneath here, I've got an SSH console, an ephemeral node. So what that means is as soon as this SSH session finishes, this node is going to delete itself from my tail net. And I can do whatever I was going to do on that node as if I was connected from an a real browser or a real terminal. We do have some safety wheels in place too. So for example, if you were to do tailscale set dash dash SSH equals false, it's gonna say, are you sure you want to do this? Because this is gonna break the SSH connection for you. So what we have to do in this case is do a dash dash accept risk equals lose SSH because this is gonna nuke our connection. You can see immediately the ephemeral connection terminated and the SSH badge was removed from our tail net here. Now, if I refresh the page in just a moment or two, this ephemeral node will disappear. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about are tags. Now, these are absolutely vital for restricting access to different types of resources. So we don't necessarily want our dev machine to be able to access production, for example. You know, for the moment, right now, I can do dev web nyc1 as root. I can SSH there. I can also SSH as root to production straight from my VM. And that's because at the moment, the identity is set to a tail and scales at gmail.com. These devices were added by me, so they assume my identity. Now, what we can go ahead and do in our access controls is define a bunch of tags. You see here, I've got two. I've got a tag for prod and a tag for dev. I've also got a couple of user groups. I've got a group for admins of which I am a member. So my identity gets subsumed into this group admin. I've also got a dev group. This Amelie user, for example, is in the developers team. And then under SSH policy, a little bit further down, I've got uh, configured a rule which allows developers to SSH into nodes tagged with the dev tag. 
So to do this, we wanna jump over to the machines page and actually on my developer machine, click the three dot menu, click edit ACL tags and add the tag of dev. I'm gonna do the same thing for the production node. I'm gonna add the tag of prod. And you can see that the identity of these nodes is now no longer mine. It doesn't have my username underneath them. It has the tag as the owner of this instance. And so what this means is that now, in fact, I left the SSH connection open in the background whilst I added that tag. And in real time, the access was revoked by the Tailscale SSH engine. So if I try and SSH back into production now from this machine, it's not going to let me, but it will let me connect back into my dev machine in the cloud using the ACLs that we provisioned underneath in the access controls. So let's go ahead and show you this in action in real time. Let's say I want to enable myself to SSH into production. I'm gonna allow anybody who's a member of the dev group to access an SSH into a production resource. Now the members of this group, remember, are defined at the top here. So group dev is my username as well as Amelie. Uh, I've now added the tag prod to this rule set that's here. I click save and in real time, I'm now able to connect into production using the rules I've just defined in my ACLs. But where it gets really cool is these get pushed down to each client device in real time. So if I go ahead and remove that tag and click save, look, it's instantly, instantly revoke the access to that SSH session in the other window. Now these rules are great because they let you control who can access which resources on your tailnet depending on source of group or a certain device based on things like device posture we recently added. You can now limit things to say only users running Linux can connect to production or only running iOS 17.2, the most recent release at the time of recording, can connect into certain resources and so on. Now. Wouldn't it be great if when we're adding a certain node to our tailnet, we could use something like an auth key to automatically define things like the tag. So when a node gets added, we don't have to go and manually tag it. We can automatically assign the role or the tag to that node when we create the auth key. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. So up in the Tailscale admin console, you go to settings and then click keys down here on the left. And then when we click generate auth key, we've got a few options. So I'm just gonna call this demo, 90 days is fine. But down the bottom here, there's an option called tags. So now any node that I add to my tailnet with this auth key will automatically assume this tag. This can be really handy for CICD instances and things like that. So you've got a, a Jenkins server or a GitHub action that's creating an instance with an auth key. It adds the node to your tailnet, does whatever it needs to do, SSHs and does a deploy to production or whatever. And then it only has permission and you limit the blast radius of what that SSH connection can do based on the auth key with the automatic tagging underneath. So those are the basics of Tailscale SSH. I sometimes wonder how we lived without this for so long. Having a centralized way to manage SSH keys. I mean, in previous roles I've been in, I've had folks who have written complicated Ansible playbooks to add and remove SSH keys. And inevitably when people get offboarded, those keys remain on the boxes for longer than they perhaps should. When folks are getting onboarded, it takes too long. There's just too much friction to get the keys on the boxes in the first place. With Tailscale SSH, all of that becomes a complete non-issue. And so you can get started with Tailscale with up to three users and 100 devices for free at tailscale.com. Until next time, I've been Alex from Tailscale.